Hey guys, what's up? This is Brian Yuzawa, and now I will be presenting about the facilities and equipment of badminton. But before that, I would like to explain first the history of badminton. Badminton, court or law game played with lightweight rockets and shuttlecock. The game is named for badminton, the country state of the Dukes of Beaufort and Gloucestershire, England. Where was first played in 1873. The roots of the sport can be traced to ancient Greece, China, and India. It is closely related to the old children's game called Battledore and Shuttlecock. So that's it. And now let's move on to the facilities and its equipment. So let's first start with ting, racket. The badminton racket is one of the most important tools a player has in the game. Badminton rackets are much lighter than most of other sports rackets because they are made from materials such as carbon fiber or a lighter material such as aluminum. Parts of the racket include the head, throat, shaft, and handle with a maximum length of 27.77 inches and a width of nine inches. Its strings that are stretched across the opening of the rocket in the checkerboard pattern, which acts as the hitting surface. Um, wait, have you seen a badminton rocket before? Well, I'm gonna show you and here it is. There. Um, badminton rackets can vary widely in cost depending on whether they are purchased as part of a basic backyard set or as more as expensive professional models. So, yeah, that's the rocket. Okay, so that's the rocket. Typically not the rocket ship. Okay, let's move on to the shuttlecock. The badminton shuttlecock, also referred to as a shuttle or birdie, oh, not the birdie that you think, <laughs> acts as um, similarly to a ball in other racket sports. However, um, the design of the birdie creates more drag as it is propelled through the air due to its feather shape. The shuttlecock is made up of a cone shape with a uh, hard cork as its tip. You know, cork? Uh, for example, when you open a bottle of a wine, that's called cork. Yeah, that's it. Ding, ding, ding. Shuttles, I mean, shuttlecocks are or can be made from a variety of materials. More expensive models are actually made from feathers and less expensive models are made from plastic feathers. The shuttlecock has 16 feathers attached to the base and uh, the length of the feathers range between 3, uh, no, 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 2.44 and 2.75 inches. So that's the shuttlecock. You know, uh, in basketball, we play the ball, but in playing badminton, the ball there serves as the shuttlecock. So that one, you know the feather type? That's a shuttlecock. Okay, so moving on to the badminton net. So basically, a badminton net is the element that divides the court into two equal parts and over which all shuttles must pass to continue a rally. So typically, the net is 1.55 meters or 5 feet and 1 inch high at the edge and 1.524 meters or 5 feet high in the center. The net posts are placed over the double side lanes even when the singles is played. The minimum height for the ceiling above the court is not mentioned in the laws of badminton anyway. So that's the net, basically. So let's go now to the facilities. Uh, the badminton court should be uh, 44 feet long by 22 feet wide if playing doubles. That's only for doubles. And 44 feet 
long by 17 feet wide for singles. If the facility is indoors, there needs to be enough height for the shuttlecock to be able to float across the net without hitting the ceiling. This height will vary depending on the strength of the players. So for example, if I play badminton that hard like I hit it hard and it will hit the ceiling or the roof, then it will become invalid and, necess and really not necessary, okay? So that's the essence of the facilities, like badminton courts should be in that way. So avoid being biased and have some futile uh, challenges. Okay, common strokes and badminton. Uh, first, the badminton stroke. A badminton stroke is the movement of the player's rocket with an intention to hit the shuttle. For example, I am holding a rocket and I will be hitting the shuttlecock. I need to hit it and pass it to the enemy so that the enemy can hit it too. That's the essence of badminton and vice versa. It depends. It's futile to think that you're just watching the shuttlecock to go onto you and not hitting it. That's useless at all. So that's a badminton stroke. But um, the badminton stroke doesn't just end there. We have different badminton strokes. And one of these is the under chest forehand stroke. The under chest forehand stroke is a stroke that, as the name suggests, is performed with the forehand grip and it is performed below the level of the chest. Meanwhile, the over chest forehand stroke is a stroke that, as the name suggests, is performed with a hand grip and it is performed above the level of the chest. We also have um, under chest backhand stroke. The under chest backhand stroke is a stroke that as the name suggests, it performed with a backhand grip and it is performed below the level of the chest. Meanwhile, the over chest backhand stroke, the over chest backhand stroke is a stroke that, as the name suggests, it is performed with a hand, I mean the backhand grip, and it is performed above the level of the chest. So, so that's the different types of badminton strokes. Now the grip. Let me present you the grip. You'll want to know why how to keep your rocket to smash shuttlecocks on that side of your body with the forehand and the backhand on the other side. You'll also be using a forehand grip to um, strike over your hands. You can strike the shuttle with your elbow up or down using a backhand grip. Hitting these grips is good practice for strengthening your skills. Next one is serving. Serving is not just for valuable. It is also applicable in badminton. Four forms of badminton are first, the high serve to push your opponents to the back of his or her side of the court. The second, the low, the low serve to bring your opponent under the shuttle. The third one, is the flick serve that is um, sometimes used to confuse your opponents who feels you're going to hit a low serve. And the fourth one is the drive serve where you strike the low, fast shuttle and the rear of the receiver. Next is the footwork. Once you know the fundamentals of moving on the court and practices them, your footwork will bring more success to your game. When you are playing singles and bending your knees with your body relaxed and waiting for action, your ready posture will include standing in the court center. Shift your feet from left to right by shifting them or gliding and jumping forward or longing forward. Go fast enough to get behind the shuttle and strike it hard enough to push backwards. So that's it. Like, when you don't move and you're like playing the game with a statue body, you can win the game. You will definitely lose the game. 
So we also have clearing. It is a technique used to return the shuttlecock with an emphasis on simplify getting the shuttlecock back on your opponent's side rather than scoring. Clearing underhand uses the same technique as a serve. So we also have the singles. To start a badminton singles game, you'll be serving from the court's right hand. The location depends on the performance of the server after the initial serve. When the score is good, you're serving from the right and you're serving from the left when it's unusual. Therefore, if the server wins the rally, it will continue to serve and if the receiver loses, the next serve will go to the receiver. So we have doubles. Serving goes back and forth between partners during double play. Typically, if there is a double play, there will be two players, right? So total of four players, two players versus two players. So that's it. The serve, uh, I mean, the serving hand in terms of even score is the same as in the single play from right and odd score from the left. If she fails to score throughout the rally, the serving partner alternates court sides and will serve until the rally is lost. The partner must serve next when the serve returns to the squad. So we also have here uh, the basic rules and regulations. A game starts with a coin toss. Whoever wins a toss gets to decide whether they could serve or receive first or what side of the court they want to be on. The side losing the toss shall then exercise the remaining choice. For example, if I flip the coin or toss the coin and then I pick a crown or a live, so I will be the one to choose where court I will be in. And of course, when I choose from the left, then the other party will be on the other side, of course. That's it. We also have, at no time during the game, should the player touch the net with his racket or his body. It is prohibited. We also have, the shuttlecock should not be carried on or come to rest on the rocket. A player should not reach over the net to hit the shuttlecock. And last but not the least, a serve must carry cross court diagonally to be valid. So that's it. We have completed our task. Yeah, but anyway, I explained about um, the badminton. Typically, it's uh, parts, uh, it's skills, skills that needed, of course. And the functions, where it started, its origin, its history, and how the game will be played, its rules and regulations, and everything that is fundamental for badminton. So, badminton is basically a game that has been played over the years and even a trend here in the Philippines. Not everybody can play badminton, but everybody knows what badminton is. So typically, badminton is a game. So that's it for Physical Education 3 from English 1A. I am Brian Yuzawa, and now I'm signing off.